Hey everyone and welcome back. Alright, I have a lot of things that I wanted to, uh, to chat about and so I'm just going to kind of go randomly so forgive me. Uh, I just kind of flick the, flick the uh, camera on and I'm going to shoot. So, <clears throat> um, a lot's, lot's happened in, uh, since the last video. Um, as you can tell, I finished the tool chest and we'll get to that in just a second. So I'm going to go over kind of an overview of the finished product of the uh, restored uh, tool chest. Uh, what I like, what I don't like, things of that nature. Then I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek at, and I haven't opened it since, uh, since I brought it home, uh, the other tool chest uh, that I won at an auction. <laughs> I also wanted to kind of share a few other things. I was <laughs> digging through some boxes. When you go to an auction, it, uh, if you've never been to one, a lot of times <clears throat> they sell flats of tools, right? Just random tools. And like you might only want, <clears throat> you might only be after one or two of the tools in that box, in that flat or whatever. And then you end up with all the rest of the, the tools. So I was sorting through some of the tools from an auction that I was at about three or four weeks ago, and I came across a few uh, a few tools that I forgot were in the box. <clears throat> some of them you can't even get to the you don't even look at all the tools in the box or the flat just because they're at the bottom and you're not going to dig through and dig to the bottom of every box. So you kind of get some some surprise uh, with that when you buy. Uh, when you buy like that, uh, we don't have very many good, uh, flea markets or, um, swap meets around here. We do have one coming up this weekend, or not this weekend, but, uh, Memorial Day weekend. I'm really looking forward to that. So we have, I got two big auctions, <clears throat> uh, coming up that I'm going to be hitting up. One is, uh, it's a three day, well, it's a three day swap meet, uh, thrown out, thrown on by, uh, by my, my local, um, weekly auction house that I go to that, I, that I, I, I hit up every Friday just to see if they've got anything. I don't usually stay, but I might do an absentee bid on something or, or whatnot, but <clears throat> so I got that. That's going to be going on uh, Memorial Day weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, which I have all those days off now because I took some leave to do uh, just for that because <clears throat> it's usually a big, uh, a big hit. And uh, on the, before that, though, on the 20th, which is not this weekend but the weekend after that, uh, there's another uh, big monthly auction that I go to. <clears throat> And there are some very, very good prospects for some really cool, unique tools that I don't have and uh, am looking, very much looking forward to and, and excited about that, uh, that particular auction. And they usually get good prices on, uh, on things that I'm looking for. The things that uh, that we are interested in. Um, <clears throat> so I got those. Those are exciting. Those are coming up, and and uh, you know, share what uh, share the uh, the uh, whatever whatever I end up winning and uh, and bring home. Um, I also did. Uh, get one win. Uh, I won an auction. Got a good deal on my latest acquisition. It's not in great shape, but it is in good shape. And I cannot, um, it takes, it's going to need a little bit of tuning <laughs> to get it where it needs to be. That's for sure. But, uh, I finally got me a slick. Three inch slick. It's a green leaf slick, and it is massive. You know, I, I've I've only held a few 
uh, slicks uh, in my day. I'm not too crazy about the handle, um, and the, the the bottom knee is the bottom's pretty true, but I'm gonna flatten it up, make sure it's good and true, and then whoever you're probably not gonna be able to see this, but whoever owned it before me, as you can see, didn't know what the heck they were doing. It's not, it's not square this way, and <laughs> the grind is this way, so you know it. They didn't know what they were doing, which is whatever. But at least they didn't grind on the back side, on the bottom, so that's good. And as you all know, or may not know if this is the first video you're watching, I plan on in, <clears throat> in, um, in, the we'll call it late summer uh early fall of next year i'm going to be retiring i'm going to move to indiana i'm going to plan uh in about <clears throat> i'm going to take about two years off pretty much um and in that time i'm going to get everything in order all my finances and and um kind of get my life in order get it back on track, uh, get kind of that transition period of retiring and not having to go to work every day. It's going to be so nice. Um, once I've transitioned from that, while I'm over there in Indiana for the two years after I retire, I'm going to be designing um, the house, the cabin that I'm going to be building. And, and I'm also going to uh, um, be doing a lot of practicing. Uh, I'm going to be building a lot of structures and stuff in that two years. And it's going to be basic practice at building large structures. Because I'm going to be moving out uh, eventually. The idea is to move out either permanently or on a... Uh, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to permanently move there. But that is still on the table. Uh, moving out and homesteading in northwestern Montana. I'm in love with that country. And uh, I just saw an email pop up on my screen from a guy that I emailed uh, on Craigslist about uh, uh, two, uh, two massive uh, post drills. Not massive, but the larger post drills. If you know what a post drill is, you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but they're five hours away. I gotta drive five hours, but there's two of them and they're a really good deal for both of them. So I don't know if I can pass that up and they're in, they look like they're in good shape. So I'm anxious to see what that guy's gotta say. Um, so yeah, this is gonna come in handy. The, the, the homestead that I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be um, building a main cabin the idea is to build one main cabin that'll be my, you know, my living quarters, the kitchen, everything that you would find in a, in a, in a, a normal house. And then I'm going to have basically doors and breezeways going to different um, buildings uh, a little bit further away from the house. Like covered but open, no walls, just like a almost like a deck or something going out to uh, another building and right now I have it planned I have it in my head anyways <clears throat> to have five extra buildings one's gonna be my wood shop one is going to be uh, a blacksmith forge uh, one is gonna be a greenhouse so I can grow my my vegetables at least three seasons out of the year uh, one room is going to be for firewood, firewood storage and lumber and things of that nature. And then one's going to be a meat processing room, basically, so I can, um, I can process all my meat, uh, you know, work all my furs and everything like that from trapping and hunting and, and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, so I got a lot, a lot of planning, a lot of dreams that I want to try and get, uh, I'm getting pumped up for it's it feels 
a lot closer than it really is, or maybe it's the other way around, but it kind of feels like it's uh, a long journey coming to an end. You know, I've been in the Navy, I will have been in the Navy almost 24 years by the time I retire and start my dream, and that's next year. And that feels great. Um, I can't express that enough. Uh, uh, what kind of one one thing uh, you know talking about dreams and 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 aspirations? <clears throat> you know, I'm 42 years old, and some people might look at me and think, "Well, you're too you know you're too old to be doing that to build your own homestead and." And, and all that kind of jazz and you know I'm looking anywhere from uh, 20 to 50 acres of land up there I think I'm gonna have enough money to just buy the land outright and all the materials and have all that stuff plus I'll have my retirement coming in so I should be set and I have other investments and uh, and I'm debt-free it's a big point but <clears throat> some of the uh, the inspiration that I got uh, the inspiration that I got, um, I don't know if this is what inspired me or if it was something that I found after I was inspired, but uh, if you're thinking about uh, doing something like that, homesteading, or if you're, a, I don't know, an introvert, if, if I dare say that, uh, like me, um, you love being in the mountains, you, you got kind of the same same outlook on life, same dreams or whatever that I'm that I'm pursuing. Um, there's no better book than to read than this one right here. One Man's Wilderness. It's basically, well, it's called One Man's Wilderness: An Alaskan Odyssey. Right. It's a Sam Sam Keith by Sam Keith from the journals and photographs of Richard Prinicky or Dick Prinicky as he goes by right so this is the very first book and it's basically all of his journal entries um, I'm not gonna spoil it for you but this guy was 51 years old and decided he wanted to go out and live one year in the wilderness in Alaska <clears throat> like so far out you could uh, you could fire off a shotgun and nobody's going to hear it. That's what I'm talking about. That is the life. I, I, <laughs> if I could do that right now, if I could go to bed and wake up in that, in that life, I would in a heartbeat. Um, so he goes out at the age 51, builds a cabin out in the middle of the wilderness in Alaska. You're talking like, Hot summers, you're talking 60 below uh, winters, you know, ungodly amounts of snow. And I mean, it just to me, that sounds like heaven, but uh, you're alone in the wilderness. It's you and your, you know, he went out, he, his goal was to, to go out there, live out there for one year. Make you know, write in his journal. He's going to journal the whole adventure, and he also went out. Uh, he was, um, he was a um, a filmmaker. I don't know if he did it for a hobby or if he did it on the side or whatnot. But he 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 went out there with uh, some. You know, this was back in the '60s, so '60s, 1960s photography gear, and he made he got footage. Uh, film footage and photographs and such so the goal was to be out there for a year uh, he was 51 when he went out there and he didn't come back in from the wilderness uh, to live until he was like 83 I think something like that he was out there for more than 30 years he just loved it so much and, but he went out there, he built, the, he built the log cabin using nothing but hand tools. Um, built a whole bunch of furniture. Built another cache for his food. Built sleds, built beds, built, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. And just became one with nature and just, uh, you know, engulfed everything that it had to offer. And... <clears throat> And just in case you were looking at these books, 
This one is only like 200 and something pages. 200 and, well, I'm looking at, I'm at towards the end, I'm at 218, 220, something like that. So it's, it's not a big book, but that's basically his first year. And then you got the second book, which is more readings from one man's wilderness, right? That's the cabin that he built. <laughs> it's amazing. And he has two videos. There's two videos you can, uh, you can buy. You can watch a few clips on YouTube. Uh, just, you know, just YouTube Dick Prinicky or Alone in the Wilderness and you'll, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But this one, the second one is like, well, let's see. Four hundred and four hundred and sixty pages ish, right? It's much bigger. A lot more reading to do. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited to dig into these. A lot of this is in the movies, right? So you'll hear a lot of things. I've <laughs> I've watched those movies uh, probably a dozen times each, and um, so I know the. I know what they're going to say. I can kind of, I know what they're going to say before they say it. And reading the books just kind of brings, I can like read the book and it's just like I'm watching the movie almost. Um, this I'm really excited about because these are his later years and I haven't, I haven't dove into those yet. So there's a lot of experience to be learned in these. Um, so yeah, excited about the slick. This is uh, <laughs> this is a massive tool. If you've never held one, I mean, I can barely get my hand around this sucker to give you any kind of size. Right? I'm a big dude. Not a big dude, but you know, six foot one, two hundred and three pounds. I just got weighed yesterday. And uh, a few of the other things, right? If you don't know what this is. I didn't even realize this was in the box, but if you don't know what this is, it is a Yankee drill press, a Yankee drill, all right? Um, it's made the, I think the original um, came out by Stanley, but here's what, what it is, and I'll, I'll kind of bring it down a little bit. What it is, is... If you wanted to drill something, right? So you take this, and this is kind of the neat thing, right? So you, you unscrew this right here. A lot of people don't even realize it even has this, and they're missing out on, on the whole thing. Pop, right? You, you twist this, you pop it out. And look, I got a full set of drills in there, too. The uh, last one is in my hand. But put it back in there. Tighten the handle back up. And then you take this, this is a big drill to be doing this with, but you take the drill bit, you got a bearing in there, and you push it forward, you slide the bit in there, you get it in place, and you lock it in, all right? Then all you do is you push down the drills, right? Now don't pull it back up and try and twist it. Just re like let it loosen your hand, let it undo itself, and then you go down again. But that way, it's only turning in one direction. All right, and you can get really moving with this thing. But you can see how effective that is, and I'm going to stop there before I drill into my pinch. So that was a nice find. And then I've had this one for, I don't know, a couple months now, but I never used it. It's called a Shinto. It's a, a Japanese um, file, rasp, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> I used it. I'm not a big, huge fan of this, but um, it does remove quite a bit of material on it. 
<laughs> removes it very quickly. Uh, it has a fine side and a coarse side. Uh, and the way you do, you, you twist this little knob right here and it releases that arm right here and you just simply unhook it, flip it, hook it back in, tighten it down, and now you're on the coarse side, the rough side. So it's kind of like a little plane, <clears throat> but it's, uh, it's a file. Interesting tool. Can't see myself using it all that much, but uh, and then I got this other little drill. I'm like, yeah, yeah it's just another egg beater drill, right? <laughs> and I go, huh, what's this switch for? I'd never seen one of these. I'm sure they've been around. I mean, obviously, they've been around for a long time, and you guys um, have probably seen it before, but I flicked that lever, and it did one of those numbers. Of course, it's oiled up now, so it didn't do it quite as drastically, but I hit it, and it, it moved on me. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> That's awesome, right? <clears throat> and then, um, of course, I don't have. Oh, there we go. Right? It even has more adjustability with the handle, so I can. Right? So. You can not only, you can move this around in whichever position you want. So say you wanted to go at that angle for one reason or not another. You lock it into that little gear position. And then you had to go that way. So you just pull this back and shift it in that direction. Lock it in. Now you've got like a compound drill. <laughs> I was like, well, that's definitely not, uh, that's definitely going to be something that gets cleaned up <clears throat> and, um, you know, a uh, restoration on it and it's going in my toolbox. It's made by um, Joic, Joe Manufacturing Company, Clausen. Never heard of them. But cool tool. Who would have thought you'd add such joy out of a little little pleasures like that? Just the little things. And here's another little feature. You can keep a few bits in there. <laughs> you know. Screwdriver bits small drill bits, whatever, right? That's cool. And if you haven't noticed by now, can you tell that I watch Cody from Wrangler Star? <laughs> my, my shop is starting to look a whole lot like his. Not on, uh, not on purpose, just kind of the way it, it turned out. Um, He's got a little red vice, and my device I ended up picking up just happened to be red, and so and my vices, my table, everything looks just it's very, very similar to his. So it's kind of funny watching his stuff and uh, seeing his shop. But so what I've done, obviously, I didn't go with. Uh, I I tried going with duck fur because i had you know it's just construction lumber around here is duck fur um or you can find it in that species but uh so i went ahead what i did was i had i had some uh some hard maple laying around and i ended up making it out of that but i tried the duck fur first and it cracked on me and you're talking an inch and a half thick inch and a half thick lumber and it, it cracked on me when I was drilling the holes. So I drilled two, I got it all shaped up, drilled two holes, went to drill a third and it cracked on me. So I had to scrap that. And 
So I ended up going with this, and this is, this is actually ash that's left over from the face chop. And you can see I just, I just, uh, it sits up in there about halfway. Uh, maybe a little bit, a little bit more than halfway. And then I've got um, three quarter inch dowels that go, you can't, they didn't go all the way through obviously, but they come down from the top for some support. Uh, got that tip and kind of built it the same very very similar to Cody's why mess with a good design right uh, I, I did countersink the uh, uh, the holes here just so that you know it would it could sit flush you know if I needed to bead on it or whatever but it just sits in there like that into either either vice that I want I just lock it down and now I have a metalworking vise that, uh, you know, does anything I want. You know, I still need to restore the vise, but for now, I'm going to use it just the way it is. But yeah, so you get it wherever you want it, you lock it down, now you got a metal vise, all right? Um, this one was nice, came with a little cutoff tool that I still have to work on. And it's got a little anvil and stuff. That's pretty neat. Anyway, so I got this all up and running. <clears throat> and uh, let's go ahead and get to the main feature. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm trying. I, I wish I could do this with my phone, but <clears throat> I'm having trouble trying to get my phone to upload my videos on my phone to upload into the uh, into the computer so I can upload them to YouTube. But <clears throat> doesn't that fit perfect right there? I mean, I don't know. I couldn't get much better than that. I, I couldn't have asked for a better fit, really. The only problem that I have <clears throat> is that uh, this chest is probably a couple hundred pounds when it's loaded down with all my tools. And this sucker holds a lot of tools. There are some tools that are not in my shop right now, but um, all my main tools that I need, they're all in this chest. <clears throat> Any woodworking you would ever need to do is all in this chest or, you know, readily available. Very, very close. <clears throat> um, but you could pretty much pull this chest anywhere and make anything you want. <clears throat> Alright, so... Uh, just looking at it from the face, you remember I, uh, I'll bring it down for that. <clears throat> I'm, uh, entertaining myself, hobbying as a blacksmith, right? So, uh, me and my buddy Mark, uh, fashioned up, he made two pulls and I made two pulls, um, that was a nice, that was a pretty cool challenge. And uh, so we went ahead and fashioned those in an afternoon. And the very first thing I ever forged what was this handle right here. And I, I think it turned out great. It's not perfect, but I like it. It reminds me that things don't have to be perfect. And that's just for grabbing it and being able to, to pull it around and stuff. See how heavy that thing is. <laughs> But, yeah, the finish that I used on, <clears throat> on this, the drawers inside are finished, or not drawers, but the trays are finished with boiled linseed oil and paste wax. I just, I don't know what it is. Um, no, I didn't use paste wax on the drawers um, of the trays. I used just boiled linseed oil. <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of paste wax smell. But I'll use it to, I'll use it as a very end product that I buff off. But I, I am, I, I love the smell of boiled linseed oil. It brings back memories of my childhood and things, good memories. So that's kind of tied to that too. But so you pull it out, it's on casters. Uh, the casters weren't on. So 
I put two two by fours, one on the front, one on the back, and then on either side I put casters. Um, because there's a cavity uh, below, you know, from the bottom of the box up to the bottom of the uh, that lower tray, and the screen went off. <clears throat> so I put those two two by fours, put all four casters on, and it uh, seems to work fine. Um, this top you probably saw a couple of videos ago. Uh, I put this top on and I feathered in the I feathered in the, the top edges and it turned out all right I think. Um, I don't know if I can get a profile down it, but you guys get the idea, right? Anyway, so I feathered it in and it kind of turned out nice, just as I guess you would uh, you would think plywood would look when you taper the edges like that but I used this and you, I'll, I'll show you why in a minute I didn't do it just for aesthetics I had a purpose it's it's got a purpose but it does kind of add a little bit of cool contrast it gives a little bit of detail to the chest itself so <clears throat> we pull it up this actually does freestand I don't need the the, the uh, tool of the workbench. Um, it's held in by leather straps, and I'll kind of well, I'll do this from here. Um, held in with leather straps and brass hardware. <clears throat> um, the top reinforcement was I had to make new holders for the saws, and the screws that were going in were going in too far and they just weren't they were they were going in too far they were coming out the other side and the ones that weren't they were they were starting to strip out because the the wood here is only like a quarter inch thick so i was like let me get some more wood on there and get a little bit better purchase and i can tighten them screws down just the way i want them to so they're nice and rigid I'll tell you, they bit into that wood just as well as I thought they would, and um, and it turned out really nice. These are really, really rigid. They're they're fast to the top, and yeah, I have my um, <clears throat> now all of my saws need work right now. I need to sharpen them. I have I have neglected. I have been using the crap out of them and not not taking care of them. Uh, was sh I, I've sharpened them, but like crude sharpening, quick sharpening type thing. <laughs> I need to just take a day and do nothing but sharpen all my tools, chisels, planes, saws, you name it, and get everything in tip-top working order again before I start my next project. Um, but yeah, so this is really nice. This is my, uh, right now anyways, my I have some other ones that I need to work on that will become my favorites, but right now this is my favorite. And it's the only saw uh, that's, unless I get another Distin just like this, it's the only saw that's gonna fit in there. And this is a beautiful saw. But this is my rip saw. <clears throat> it's a, uh, it's a, it's a Distin. It's a D8. This is a rip, and this is five teeth per inch. Uh, the set on here is heavy. I have a, I put a heavy set, and it's sharp. Um, if you've never used it, you can try it. I'm not a huge fan. I start, when I first started sharpening saws, I used. Um, uh, I don't have it. It's actually in the box of the computer sitting on, but you can see I use Dicom like a, a layout die on there. I put it on the teeth so I knew which ones I had sharpened and, and that kind of thing. So that comes in handy. But this guy still needs to be fully restored. The only saw that I have that's already fully restored is this guy. And she can use, 
a little bit of touch up as well. She's a little bit older, but this is a pair. They're both Distin D8s. She's still, she's still sharp. I'm surprised at how well she cuts uh, by as much as I've used her and not sharpened. But it's a beautiful saw, isn't it? Anyway, full size hand saw, panel saw, whatever you want to call it. I typically like to call panels, I don't call it a panel saw unless it's a smaller saw. But these little guys, they, they go in, they, they hold it in perfectly, right? <clears throat> so, um, if you, if you, well, we'll get to that in a second. So I built these trays. I just grab one. And I, I don't know if I read I don't know if I filmed that or not, but I put these handles in there uh, for obvious reasons. And just so I can, for the ease of picking it up and just kind of put whatever you want in there. And lucky for me, they slide almost perfectly right into my tool tray, <laughs> my tool well. So that works out handy and the handles are right above the, uh, the bench. So that just worked out great. <clears throat> totally wasn't uh, planned out like that, but got lucky. Um, so the trays are really hefty. They're out of full three quarter uh, stock. Uh, I got half lap joints with dowels, just like you would see in old school. Not quite as fine as dovetails, but an old school uh, drawer. That's how they would have made them back then. And then the bottom is just simply uh, glued on. And then I finished it, uh, planed it, rounded out all the edges so that it's nice. I'll be handling these a lot. So I wanted to be nice and comfortable feel to the hand. And yeah, so I did that, <clears throat> did all three boxes. That took a little bit of time. And then another thing is, is Putting them together, you can grab all three of them at once and pull them all out if, if that's what you needed to do. And um, inside here, I have uh, basically, you know, routers, scrapers, guides, all my tool rolls, um, random stuff, mallets, sandpaper, that kind of jazz. Uh, maybe one day, if you want, let me know and um, I'll do a full tool box, tool chest review. But this is kind of heavy, but it still, it still works. Um, you lift them all up, they just kind of become one big tray. And then inside here... Try and do this without. Mm, it doesn't really work. There, now we can see. So I got all my planes, some block planes. Got my shoulder plane. Stepping up. There's my three and my four over here. A couple of fives. One for rough. One for finish. And then uh, my number six, seven, and eight, they all fit in here perfectly. And um, got my block planes, my new shooting plane over there in the corner, and drill bits and things of that nature. <clears throat> Since you couldn't really see it from that side. So, yeah. Uh, I put a little liner uh, on the bottom, like one of those drawer liners. And then, I don't know if there's going to be a good spot to get this, but I'll try it. So here, you have the locking mechanism. And like I said uh, in previous videos, it's uh, it's not really, <clears throat> it wasn't really designed, I don't think, 
I mean, this thing's pretty heavy. One person's not going to pick this chest up. It would take two people, and I don't even have handles on it, so they'd have to grab it from below. But if they wanted the chest, all I got to do is pick it up and take it. <laughs> it's not going to be that hard for two people to, to haul this out. Plus, it's on wheels, so. Um, but these two, these two dowels right here, right, they pull out of here. And what they do is they, they slide down into uh, tabs that are on the back of the drawers that are on the bottom. And so you just drop this, you just simply drop it in there and it locks it in place and you can't pull the drawers out from the bottom. So whenever I go to use the chest, I just pull them out. And I had to carve, I don't know if you can see that all that well. But I had to carve a little divot in there so I could reach in there because this this right here comes down and it goes lays flush across the top so I couldn't have something sticking up. So I just carved a little divot in there that I can reach in there with my fingers and pull it up. And they'll just sit in here. And you know I'm in the Navy so I've uh, got red and green. So Red for left, or port, and green for starboard. All right. Um, next, I guess, would be the drawers. And they're nothing that special. They're nice and deep. And this one, I basically just have... <clears throat> uh, most people keep their chisels and stuff in their drawers. Well, my chisels are all in tool rolls. So, um, yeah, so I've got <clears throat> my sanding blocks, uh, some of my dovetail chisels that I don't use that I haven't used that much, um, files, my pencils, my marking stuff and, um, some layout dividers and, and whatnot doodads also lined with some drawer liner on the bottom. The second one over here. Um, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> I got these guys, and these, these I wanted an auction. There's no maker mark on it or anything, and it looks like I need to coat them again. But they were round, and I so I just, I didn't like them. Plus, this big one over here didn't fit, wouldn't uh, close. The drawer wouldn't close with it in there. So I, I, uh, I took a, I mounted it in the vise and took a plane and, and um, flattened uh, two sides 180 out from, from one another. And it is amazing how much better of a purchase you can get with that. Those, those little flat spots. And now they fit in the drawer and the drawer closes. And one of the best things is that now they don't roll around on the bench. <laughs> they stay put. So I got those. I got my, you know... Everybody's got them. Little number 151. Probably can't see that, but yeah. Little 151 Stanley uh, spoke shave. And <clears throat> I got an old record. An old record uh, round bottom. And then some more layout tools. This is my, my backup, the one, the kind of the, the marking knife that Paul Sellers uses. Uh, is not this one. Uh, this is my backup. This is what they sell in the in the U.S. So that stays in there as my backup. And just a few extra cap irons and such. And then the <clears throat> the long drawer. That's where a lot of my measuring stuff is at. And I got a couple of Japanese saws in there. I tell you. Um, so I've got a couple of angle battens in here, some other things. Um, I got my, my two foot, my two foot square in here. I use this thing more than you would think. And I've got a one foot square. They're, uh, brown and sharp. That's I, most people, especially like machinists, they go with either brown and sharp or stare it. And I kind of have a mix of both in my tool collection, but... 
Um, I like Brown and Sharp a lot. So, yeah. So my whole collection in here for what I use is regarding uh, all my squares or all machinist squares. Just because I'm a machinist and that those are the kind of tools I have. So my squares are really nice. And then I have, you know, the V squares. These are really awesome for uh, finding center of things and, and things of that nature. Then you get a bevel for it. Protractor, if you will. Uh, some uh, dovetail guides, panel, panel gauge, my winding sticks. I made these <clears throat> uh, using a similar method to the Paul Sellers method, but I made the winding sticks. Still super, super satisfied with those. And there's my, my good marking knife over there. And uh, my Veritas uh, uh, marking gauge. So that's that in the tool chest. And kind of a peek inside the trays. Well, I can do that a little better, I think, from here. And I'll put this back. So, well, I'm not going to go over what's in here. I mean, you guys can all see these things. And this is, uh, this goes kind of out for, yeah, and this whole thing, it's, it's, um, it's not the best construction in the world, but it's, you know, as you can tell, it's good and sturdy. It's got a couple hundred pounds of tools and a couple hundred pounds of idiots sitting on top of it. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's good and sturdy. It's got a lot of old character. I don't think it's as old as I thought it was. I think it's, if I had to guess now, after looking at the construction a lot deeper, I'd say this, this box was probably, this tool chest was probably, probably made somewhere, I don't know, somewhere between 50s and 60s, maybe even 70s. I think it'd be hard pressed to say that they were that it dated all the way back to the to before then, like into the 30s and 40s. <clears throat> um, but this this right here goes a little shout out to a new friend of mine who I've become uh, I guess pen pals with. Uh, he's one of my subscribers from France. Let's see if I can say his name right. Surreal or Cyril. There you go. Cyril. <clears throat> Real cool guy. Uh, he, we were pointing out, he was pointing out kind of some of the things that he and I uh, uh, have both uh, done, the, the YouTube channels. You know, everybody, we all watch Paul Sellers and and uh, we have a, a few, uh, you know, Mr. Chickadee. If you haven't checked out his channel, check out Mr. Chickadee and obviously Paul Sellers. You can't go wrong with 50 years plus of experience. But, um, so I made the winding sticks, um, uh, from the Paul Sellers method and I've made a couple other things, but I also made, this is my, my little mini version of, now I've got it, it's not, I'm not going to fully seat it right here, but this is my, it's, uh, made this head out of, this is a mini version of it. <laughs> uh, the the handle is mahogany. And well, Sapili, but mahogany, and the head is uh, maple firewood. Really, some firewood that I had uh, out in the uh, out in the yard. Turned it into turned it into a tool. Um, not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I'm going to sort of seated, not fully seated, but. Um, yeah, I mean, from my very first mallet, I think it turned out freaking amazing. Right now, it's still, it's all swole up. Uh, so I won't seat all the way down just with one whack. But, so that's that. It's the, uh, the mallet. Um, <clears throat> let's see. There's a couple, there's a lot of other tools and stuff that I want to share with you guys, but it's just not not the right time. The video's already getting along enough, and well, 
I guess we need more content for the next uh, the next videos, right? Um, I have also mm, quite a few things. I need to make a shooting board. Um, I've been using a piece of junk shooting board or makeshift shooting boards just on the bench, whatever I've got. But I need a dedicated shooting board. I have a fine shooting plane. Now I need a fine shooting board for that plane, right? Um, <laughs> speaking of odd jigs, I picked these up for like a dollar at a, a, um, um, a Habitat for Humanity store, which is basically, for those of you not familiar, <clears throat> in the States we have Habitat for Humanity, which is uh, basically like uh, going to um, a used goods store, but it's like a, a guy store, uh, you know. Uh, they got tool. They, uh, they do have certain things like couches and stuff like that but a lot of it's like you know they go renovate a house and then all the old stuff cabinets sinks uh tools um electrical stuff uh you know you name it trim all that kind of stuff that you would find that you would use in like a. it's like going to a used dealer of a of a big box store anyway I found these two there, and I didn't pick them up at first, but I saw this hardware, and I couldn't find this hardware anywhere else with the slotted slots in them, you know. And so I wanted these this hardware, and that was worth a buck just by itself um, to use in my shooting board, because I'm going to have a, an adjustable fence uh, up front, uh, and a, a sacrificial front, part of it anyway. But I saw these, and I was like, well... I need the hardware. They're only like a dollar. I think they were a dollar, a dollar for both or dollar a piece. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But what are they? Have you ever seen this? No clue what they are. They look like some kind of sled for something. Some kind of maybe. I don't know. I ain't got a clue. But there's two of them. So it's for a pair of a pair to do something with. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even going to try and figure it out right now, but it'll probably get trashed and I'll keep that hardware and we'll move on smartly. Uh, I think that, oh yeah, I almost forgot the new chest. <laughs> Ugh, shouldn't beat on my nice fish like that. Okay, so it's not so nice, but... It's nice for me. So that's that. It's my drill. That's going to be tricky getting everything to sit in there. If everything finds its home, it'll be good. So that's that box. And I'll I'll go ahead and shoot a different video for the other box. So I'll go ahead and wrap this one up <laughs> for the other tool chest. Uh, but it's pretty cool. I mean, it's not spectacular, but it's pretty cool. It's cool for me, and you'll see why here in a second. But uh, stay tuned, and I'll shoot a video of that. And uh, friends and family, I love you. Everybody else, I will see you on the next clip.